We're gonna learn how to connect APIs to Bubble today. This is a super powerful skill that's going to unlock so many new opportunities for you, so many new functionalities with your website. There's, there's a whole bunch of services online that will allow you to do things like search the internet directly within your website, uh, add artificial intelligence to your site to scan images and give insights. And all these tools that other people have already created for you, we can access these via an API and we'll explain exactly how that works and how to do it. And you just can access, you can just put those features into your site more. So we're gonna start with connecting a simple API and I should also define what an API is now in, in case you don't know. And it's a, it's a application programming interface Basically, besides the jargon, it is a, it's a way to have uh, to interact between applications, the standard protocol that different applications use to communicate with each other. And so uh, Bubble has this really awesome built-in uh, plugin that's called the Bubble API Connector, which lets us add any sort of API that we want. And so we're going to connect a sports data API in this example because it's a relatively straightforward set up. Some APIs are more advanced and more difficult to set up than others. And this one is, is a relatively simple one. So it'll be a good place for us to start and a good place for us to learn. So I'm going to create a new app right now. We'll call this app sports. Actually, I think I created it already. Did I? No, I didn't yet. So, so we're called sports world and you can name your app whatever you want. It is going to have to be a unique name and make sure you you're you created a bubble.io account. You've logged in. So we're not going to start from a template on this one. If you want to start from a different design, that's totally fine. The only important point in here to follow along is going to be, uh, is, or the points to follow along are going to be associated with the design of the app. We're going to connect things in a, connect things in the, the plugin settings. So we'll see in just a moment. And the other uh, URL that you're going to want to visit is sportsdata.io slash soccer dash API. The link will be down below in this video description for you to click on and visit the site. And you'll want to sign up for a free trial to get uh, this data on this page. So click free trial. And so here you can fill out the basic information uh, about yourself uh, so that you can we can get access to this data. And what this is, is it's real-time updates about sport, about soccer games, the matches, the scores, uh, including statistics. So let's say I don't want to be informed about product updates because I don't really, uh, this is just an example. You know, I, I'm not opposed to newsletters, but that's your personal choice. So we've got all that information. Let's click on submit. Once you've added all your information, click on submit. We wait one moment, we get a free trial confirmation. So awesome, it says, uh, thank you. you, you're now signed up for the free trial. Let's us know that some of the data is being scrambled. What that really means is that this is a paid API and a lot of service providers offer their, their uh, API at, at a certain price after so many calls. Typically it's at scale though. So you'll most of the time you'll be able to implement an API for free, even if it would be expensive for a big business to connect uh, to that API. So here we are inside Bubble as well, since this is loaded. So we'll stay in Bubble for a little bit uh, for, for the time being, and you can keep this window open. Let's go in on the far left-hand side, we have this, this area called plugins. So we we'll want to click on this area with a little plug and we'll click on add plugins. Here's where we're going to search for API. Okay, API bubble, whoops, actually do a bubble API. So search for bubble, bubble, API connector, here we go. This is what we want, so click on install. This is a really helpful plugin. It lets us add as many APIs as we want directly in here. So we can now click on the button, add another API, and we'll, we are, we've, added our first API. Here we can define the name. The name is for our internal reference. In this case, I'm going to call it sportsdata.io soccer, uh, soccer game games. Now let's read a little bit about the, let's go into the developer portal here. So launch developer portal portal and learn about this API. And 
as if I, I do know how it's set up already, but uh, it's good for us to imagine that this is our first time coming to, to visit this documentation and where should we figure things out? Typically getting started is the best place. So we'll click on getting started, what we see here, making the live API calls. There's some information in here. Uh, and I've already skimmed through a lot of this. So let's keep going. Let's just go, let's go back through here, da, da, da. So we'll leave that alone for now. Um, and we'll stick to what we have right here because what we have at the top here is enough information to connect things. So it says in here, this is the documentation for the sports data data, uh, uh, data soccer API. And it says that they've got these things called endpoints that can be accessed via HTTP Git uh, using your key. And we can see we get this little key in here. So we're gonna wanna use that, that key. Here we have the particular request. Let's now, we have the different endpoints in here. And what the endpoint is, is that's uh, a something that we can add into the API connector in here on this, this call right into here. We'll do that in a moment. Uh, and that will allow us to gather information or send information to this particular URL uh, between the apps, between bubble and sportsdata.io. So going back in here, let's, let's do the very first call, which is to get all of the countries. So we've got this endpoint. So let's go ahead, let's copy this endpoint. And you can see that I clicked on this collapse or expand and I, we by default had this first call and we'll say we'll get all countries is what you can call it and use as data or action. In this case, we're gonna use this as data and the data or action uh, option depends on how we want to use this, uh, basically this particular, we call it a call, that's just uh, that's just a communication point between the apps. How are we gonna use this? Are we gonna send out information? Is it going to be basically in the actions in here? So would we be able to access it in here as a step? Or is it going, or is the, if it's data, in this case, then we, we, should, we, we should be able to access it by clicking on, uh, for example, I drew a repeating group on the page, or you could also draw a group, anything that's capable of storing uh, data in bubble. And in, instant, in this instance, both the repeating group and the group are. And when we're in here, we can, let's just, I'll just put text in here and we'll say, get, get data from an external API. And you'll see once we've connected the API, you'll see we get an option in here and we've selected data. That's where the, the data becomes available to us that particular call that we have, the data call. Data type, very common to work with JSON. And this J JSON is just the standard format for what, uh, what basically an object of information. So it has, it has keys and particular values associated with those keys. It's very simple syntax. We'll take a look at it later. Uh, and all of the, all of, in fact, it won't be in this particular uh, tutorial because this tutorial is all about receiving information from an API and not sending it out. But we will, in uh, after we kind of connected some of these calls, we'll go in and look at another example of sending out the information too, so we get a holistic perspective on how things work. So we've we're back in here. We have we understand the difference between the data and action hopefully now. And now we've got these different options for git, post, put, patch, delete. And these are different standard types of essentially communication between our app and the, the service provider that we're connecting to. Git is typically used to gather information from the service provider. If we've used a post action, that typically means that we're sending the information out to the service provider. Put can mean that we are sending information or we're updating some information uh, on that from that service provider. So if we had a put, that might mean that we have connected to Shopify and we wanna do something on our app and that's gonna update things on, Shop on our Shopify store. That could be a put request in that instance. The, the patch is uh, similar and then delete is would be deleting objects. And we're gonna look at just the Git and uh, po post request uh, for the time being and starting off with just Git because we are gathering information. 
So we know as well that all our, it says in here, all our API endpoints can be accessed via an HTTP GET request using your API key. So that's really nice. So we already know that we are gonna use a GET request. The next thing that we want to add in here is uh, we want to take a look at, well, let's make sure that we've copied the, copy the URL and I, and we did this a little bit earlier, but we'll copy it again. So I'm gonna copy it, paste the URL into here. So we now have the URL as a good start. The next thing that we need to add in here is authentication. And so authentication is the way that the sports data.io or the service provider that we connected to knows that we have, we are authorized to access some information from their service. And that's the uh, point of getting these key called the API key. It's, it's a way for us to, uh, bas it's basically like our passcode to access their data or to update data on their site. So here we have this little, uh, this little piece of text in here that we're going to copy. And it says in here, you can pass, you can pass the API key as a query parameter or using the following request header. So let's look at what a request a request header is, uh, can be added right in here. And this it's, uh, in here we say request header. And so it's telling us that the key for this should be this OCP API M subscription key that dash key. So if you, you should copy this first part, and then the actual key that we'll add. So the key is going to be the, uh, we're going to get it from right in here. And it's the same for all of these. You'll, you will notice once you go down the page, that it's the same API key, API key. So we will now, uh, can, so you should use, you should also use control C and control V in here because right clicking and copying and pasting sometimes, uh, doesn't work as well as it, as it, I think it should in, in here, in uh, the plugin connector with, uh, with bubbles. So I just recommend using your command or control C and control, uh, command or control V on your keyboard to paste these keys in easily. So we will, whoops, let's grab that. Let's grab this particular key. So, so let's see if we can just control C it. I want to see if we got it. Not quite. Let's try that again. So, so if we go, there we go. I almost had it quite annoying. They put that in a pop-up or they, they put that in a drop down. We'll want to grab that. Okay. I'm going to, now I'm going to copy that and paste it into here. So we have it in there. Okay, so we've added the, the key and a header is, is a, simply a standardized way for us to send certain information, for example, the API key in this, in this instance to, the, to sportsdata.io or the service provider. We also want to add another key and this key is, telling, uh, is going to tell Bubble and also the, it is going to tell Bubble what kind of information are we going to be receiving from, from sportsdata.io. And when we look at this example here, we could see that the, they, ha, they say there's a value on the type of information that we can, re, we can receive in the form of JSON. And so Bubble needs to know what, the, what sort of data we're going to be receiving. That way, it will be able to make sense of it and we can actually work with the data once we've brought it into bubble. So that's why we're going to use this accept header. We're going to use this, um, this header called accept. And here we're going to say application, application slash JSON. Okay. We've added the second header. We have added get requests. Oops. So we're all set now to initialize the call. Let's initialize the call and see what we get. Hopefully we've set everything up right. Awesome. And this is a, this is a successful response. When you see that you're getting values that are returned, you've, you've got all these different types in here and we can match them in here. Typically these are mapped uh, fairly accurate. These are usually mapped accurately but you may want to adjust a few things and 
look through these carefully in the case, for example, that you're looking at a score and a game score is being brought in as text, you would, you may want to adjust that to a number and that way you'll be able to easily draw comparisons if we were, if we were trying to um, for determine the, the point difference or other particular information that may not be given to us immediately in here. So just keep that in mind and read through these. And once you're satisfied that, uh, that these different types look like uh, they are the right types in bubble, then we'll click on accept. And I'm gonna click on accept now and that will be, uh, that will be fine. So we'll click on save. So we have successfully gathered information about this, uh, of the, the country information. We can also add a shared header in here. What the shared header means is under all of the different API calls, we uh, we can have this particular header. So basically this will add a header just like we have down in here to every single call. Let's actually put the accept application slash JSON as a shared header on the top here. And we can actually now remove this one up in here and let's reinitialize the call and we'll see it's still gonna work. Boom, we get all the information back. Now, the really awesome thing, and actually let's go even a step further because we also know that the API key is gonna be the same for all these different instances, <clears throat> the different calls. And that's something that we can determine just by scrolling down the page and taking a look at and seeing that, okay, the API key is the same here, 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 etc. So we can also add the API key as a shared header. So let's do that too. And let's add some more keys in here. So boom, scroll that one down. Now let's reinitialize re the call again. And boom, we still get all that information. Now let's look at how fast we can connect more data with uh, sports data up here. We can gather more information. And that's something that I was really just pleasantly surprised about and really happy when I was working on this project because I was thinking it'd be quite a nightmare to gather sports data. Um, but uh, turns out that there's this really awesome API that we can use and we're connecting to it right now. So let's now gather something. Let's pick something interesting within sports. Maybe we're gonna gather this. Let's gather the games by date, the schedule, let's see, by player ID the free ones. Let's go into the free ones to see the country. We can really pick whatever you want. If you guys want to add something in, let's get all the player information. We're also going to look at how to make sense of this information once we have it in bubble, because we've gathered it in bubble and I'm going to add basically two more. And then we're going to look at how, how can we make sense of the information it's given to us. And let's say, get all players. Now let's initialize this call. It takes a moment to connect. Hopefully it will go over soon. I think my internet may be a little bit slow. In the meantime, I'm gonna pick another one in here. Standings, let's gather the teams. And that will be plenty. Copy. All right, let's just cancel that because I think the internet is running a little too slow and we'll keep going. This one will say, uh, get, so get teams. Okay. Boom. And we have all the teams now that's plenty. And you guys can add more data if you want. And you, as you can see, you can just hit these different endpoints quite easily, just copying the same format that we set up in here. You're always going to want to uh, use this initialize call. Once we've initialized the call, that means that we can, we'll always be able to access it again without having to do this over again. We'll, we'll be, what I mean is we'll be able to access it within other parts of bubble. So let's take a look at that now. We're returning to what we created earlier in the video, where we had this get data from external API. We can now see that we have an option for, we have select an API provider. Let's go through this example again and see how we got there. So I added a repeating group to the page, drag it out. I chose a, I chose a type of content and here let's, 
the type of content we can see we've got the, we get these we have new options for us because we've connected the api we get this get soccer team content so let's choose get soccer team because we want to show a bunch of soccer teams and this is what we're going to display in here then let's say get data from an external api so click here get data from external api and we're going to get all uh, get soccer teams so now the next thing we're going to do is drag this down and let's add an image on the page let's see if we can get the logo of the soccer team what do we have here so we've got the so and you can see that the, well, you you should see that the way that we're able to extract the information is by adding different elements in bubble inside the repeating group like this text like this photo and we're going to just explore the information and by doing that as we we use this current cells get soccer team and now we begin exploring what the different options are and the way for us to figure things out is just by is by exploring you can also read of you you of course can also read the api documentation to figure out these names uh, i prefer exploring i think it's a fast way for us to figure things out because a lot of things are pretty self-explanatory like the name that should be the name of the team so let's go with that let's see what we get for that name and let's see if we can get a logo we have gender type uh address email club color let's go with the wikipedia logo url and then let's just get let's just make this bigger and let's call that good for now just get the logo and the name go up to size 40. that's probably too big we'll bring it down a bit it doesn't matter too much what the design looks like right now because we're focusing on tactical things and now let's run this page in preview to see what this looks like and we see upon loading uh, now they're appearing boom and just like that we have all these <clears throat> all these soccer teams with the different names next to them and the, the date <coughs> excuse me west ham fc fs fc colon so pretty sweet right so let's let's now go in and take a look at an example of a different api where we are going to well that's okay uh, we just had a little time out there on the previous call we should we just want to redo that uh, later on and i'm going to move on from that because you now know how to set up these calls and you following these steps you should reproduce a successful outcome let's look at a different api now with slightly different structure and see how we can connect things i strongly encourage you to check out our website at newagedevelopment.bubbleapps.io the link will be down below this video and create an account on our website you can access our private forum where we regularly visit to answer questions about bubble development to help you get unstuck if you get stuck and you have a bug in your website or your app or if you're looking for advice on getting clients as a web developer, we also talk about that. Uh, anything related to bubble development, you'll find in there. And the goal of this website is to turn you into an expert uh, and give you the tools that you need and the skills to be able to build any kind of website or application that you want uh, online and uh, be able to, you can unleash your creativity online. That's our goal. So definitely want to see you there. And I'm looking forward to seeing you there. See you in the next video, guys.